This is the story of eight-year-old Shukram. He's an only child who now lives with his father. He's come into hospital with a rash. The skin is blistering and peeling off. The rash is all over his body, but it's particularly bad on his mouth, eyes and genitals. Shukran's parents have been separated since he was born. His mother was not tested for HIV during her pregnancy. Indeed, it seems that she never found out her status. Just over a year ago, when Shukran was seven, she became suddenly ill and died. Shukran's father, on the other hand, has known that he's HIV positive for more than ten years. Shukran's first recorded height and weight was when he was almost six and a half, before his mother died. He was already very thin, with a BMI right at the bottom of the WHO percentile chart. This is the same reading plotted on an alternative Z-score BMI chart with a greater range. It categorises Shukran as severely thin. Over the next 18 months, there was no improvement. It was only when he was eight that his father, concerned about his weight, took him to a health centre where he was finally given an HIV test. That was five weeks ago. The test came out positive. Shukram was started straight away on Cotrimoxazole prophylaxis. Then, two weeks later, he was initiated on ART. He was given a starter pack with a two-week supply of medicines. Unfortunately, this was not recorded in his health passport. The health passport does show that two weeks after initiation, he went back to the health centre to get more medicines. At the review, he complained of having sore, itchy eyes and eye discharge. Fortunately, Shukran was not given a refill. Rather, he was referred to the hospital where he's now arrived. Unfortunately, the father didn't realise the urgency, so it's taken a week for him to be brought here. By now, the sore eyes and mouth are much worse and a rash has developed all over his body. The skin has blistered and in some places is peeling, leaving sores which are open to infection. In a few places, the sores are already healed with new skin forming. He complains that it's painful to urinate because of sores on his penis. <coughs> Shukran also has a nasty cough and his breathing appears slightly laboured. He has a fever. The father says he's been having fevers and night sweats on and off for a month. He tests positive for malaria. By coincidence, Shukran is not the only child to have come in with Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Indeed, three children have come in at the same time. But the other two, both girls, are HIV negative. This is Janie. She has skin peeling off in a number of places on her body. This is very typical of Stevens-Johnson syndrome. The skin first gets a strange rash with lines and small folds where it almost looks like it's grown a size too big for the body. After that, it starts to peel off. The areas where this happens look almost like severe burns. Once again, Janie has been particularly affected around the mouth. Go. 
The third child is four-year-old Chikondi. She's in the worst condition. A very large area of skin has peeled off, leaving oozing open wounds. She's in a critical condition and is in a great deal of pain. Again, the mouth and the eyes are badly affected. On the child, this can be on the skin, eh? There's no bacteria on. Unlike Shukran, both of the girls test HIV negative, and their guardians both say they were not on any medication when the rash started. Stevens-Johnson syndrome is a severe immune reaction which is normally provoked by medicines. It's not just nevirapine. Cotrimoxazole and some other antibiotics can also cause it. And it can also be triggered by other things. In the case of these two girls, who are both HIV negative, it's not possible to find out the cause. For all three children, the most important first step is to stop all medication or other possible cause. Fortunately, Shukran's ARVs were stopped at the health centre a week ago. After that, successful treatment depends on good nursing care. The nursing care is so important because the skin is open. It's not closed as the normal skin. So when you see that condition, it's good to isolate the person from other conditions. And the environment should be clean. Shukran and the two girls were isolated in a room which was first scrubbed from top to bottom with disinfectant. All linen was sterilized. We are cleaning the room each and every day with chlorine and even changing all the linens. We are changing them each and every day. The children were treated as if they had severe burns, where large areas of skin are also lost. Initially they were given fluids, using the same calculation used for burns. I was also monitoring the vital signs to the kids because uh, the condition can also complicate to other conditions. So I was doing the vital signs too hourly, especially temperature, because the fever can come out if there is an infection somewhere in the body. The eyes and the mouth need to be kept moist. The eyes in particular must be treated with an antibiotic ointment and must not be allowed to dry out. Otherwise, complications can lead to damage to the eyes and even blindness. He's getting some proteins. Finally, the children were put onto a high-protein diet to try to help the healing process. In this case, lots of milk and eggs. They were also given strong painkillers. The lips and the eyes also are so painful. So, for the pain management, they were prescribed with um, the morphine or any analgesic because the wounds are so painful. It's a week later and the careful nursing has paid off. The two girls are now quite a bit better. Janie is hardly recognisable. On her body, many of the wounds are no longer there. A week ago, this was an open sore. Now it's healed and most of the skin has grown back. Elsewhere, the dead layer of skin has dried and it's peeling off in sheets. But new skin has already grown to replace it underneath. Her lips have almost completely healed when compared to a week ago and her eyes also look much better. Chikonde still has some way to go in comparison. She's in a lot of pain and the massive wound on her back is still extensive. But it's not infected and you can see the raw patches starting to form new skin and to heal. As long as the good nursing care continues and she avoids infection, she's past the danger point. The change is most obvious in her face, especially the eyes and lips which are healing well. And finally, Shukran. After a course of anti-malarials, he no longer has a fever. The skin rash has also improved a great deal. All the open sores and blisters which are on the trunk of his body have now healed up. But I think these will peel off. 
He still has lesions on his legs, but they look like patches of dry skin which will soon flake off. On his arms, this has already happened. It no longer hurts for him to urinate, and the sores on his lips have dried up. However, he still has ulcers in his mouth. More worrying, Shukran has a problem with his eyes. They look sore and they're still watering. Long-term eye problems are one of the main complications of Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which is why constant application of ointment is so important. Shukran is given a nutritional assessment. A month ago, he was already very thin, with a BMI just above 12. Since then, his weight has gone down by almost a kilo, and his BMI has dropped to 11.5. On admission, Shukran was coughing badly, and he had recurrent fevers, making him a suspect for TB. On the other hand, all these symptoms could be explained by the malaria and Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which often causes a serious cough. A week later, his cough is quite a bit better. A chest x-ray is ordered. The chest x-ray is judged to be non-suspective of TB, so Shukran is not started on TB treatment. Shukran is now being discharged. A referral letter is being sent in his health passport to the health centre for him to be reinitiated on an alternative first-line ART regimen once the rash has completely resolved. He's told he can start cotrimoxazole again because he'd been treated with this previously without side effects. He's given eye ointment and drops to continue treatment until the eyes are completely healed. The importance of keeping the eyes moist is stressed. Six months later, Shukran has come for a follow-up visit to the hospital. Just a matter of showing that there was inflammation. Mm -hmm. yeah. He looks much better. His skin doesn't have scars, but there are some hyperpigmented spots in a few places. His legs have completely healed. He no longer has any sores on his mouth or lips. Stevens Johnson's syndrome is a life threatening reaction, but once the acute phase has passed, the skin rash does heal up almost completely. Over the last five months since starting ART, Shukran has put on more than two kilos. While he's still small for his age, he's noticeably less thin. Shukran does, however, still have problems with his eyes, which are sore. This is a very common long-term complication. At an eye clinic, a diagnosis of symblepharon is made. Of course, it's from there up to somewhere there. If you... This is where the layer of eyelid closest to the eye and the eyeball stick together. Because of the constant discomfort, Shukran's eyes are watering permanently. This may have happened because the eye drops were not continued for enough time after the rash on the rest of his body cleared up. The good news is that it's not affected his vision and it is possible to treat with an operation on the eye, so Shukran is referred to an eye centre where this can be done. Finally, Shukran's ARVs need to be checked. The last time he went to pick up medicines at the health centre was two weeks ago, but once again this was not noted in his health passport. So his father is asked to show the pills that he was given.
It turns out that two weeks ago, Shukram was put back onto the old regimen containing nevirapine because they'd run out of alternative first line at the health centre. So today, he switched back to the regimen not containing nevirapine. It's again written in his health passport that he must never be given nevirapine because he had a life-threatening reaction. Before leaving, Shukran and his father are both given counselling about the danger of nevirapine for Shukran as well as about adherence. They're told that if there are no medicines at the health centre, they can in future come to the hospital clinic. <laughs>